Hi, I'm Tampa City Councilman Frank Reddick. You're watching Tampa Bay Community Network. Hi, I'm Bill Hodges, and this is Spotlight on Government. And we have a really, really great guy with us today from the Tampa City Council, Frank Reddick. Thank you. Councilman Reddick, how great to have you on the show. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here. You've lived in the Tampa area your, your entire life, is that correct? Correct. Born and raised here in Tampa. Uh, born and raised in West Tampa. Really? Uh, yes. Did you spend your travel money you weren't able to leave? Or? <laughs> no, I, I, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> no. Just able to uh, live in a, in, in a nice environment uh, growing up in West Tampa. You had a lot of friends there, lifelong friends, I assume. Oh, yes. Uh, um, uh, I still see some of them today. And it, it's, it's good to be able to discuss some of the things we did in the past. And uh, we didn't have much. And raised by my grandmother and and, and uh, so we had to uh, deal with what we had. And, and a lot of them felt the same way. You know, I, I remember a time, I grew up in Canada originally, mm -hmm. and we, we, we didn't have much, but we always had enough. Correct. It yeah. was strange. <laughs> right. And we, we, that's, that's the case with us. Uh, we didn't have much, but what we did have, uh, we were able to eat and have food on the table. And, um, I always put a little more water in the soup and it was enough for one more person. Correct, yes. <laughs> Pass the place around and make sure you eat your share of beans. <laughs> you uh, went on to college from here, and where did you go off to college? I went to uh, a small private school in Augusta, Georgia by the name of Payne College. Payne? Payne. Yes, okay. uh, it's, it's one of the Negro college. Uh, oh, really? Right. One of the land grant colleges? Correct. And I used to live next to Wilberforce. Oh, okay. And uh, that, that was that was a fabulous place to go out and visit. Also, that was a great experience. Um, it was my first time away from home, and, and um, so I was enjoying it. But you kind of took the neighborhood with you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. When we first moved, I speak lightly of that because I, when we first moved from Canada, my mother and father in Canada, we'd always had people of color on our street. Mm -hmm. it just it was and they were just the same as everybody else. Mm -hmm. And then when we moved to the United States, my folks didn't know any better and mm -hmm. bought the best house they could afford. Mm -hmm. And it happened to be in an all-black neighborhood. Oh, I was good. the only white kid for 16 blocks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure they got a good rate on the house. <laughs> yeah, they got a good, good buy on the house. Yeah. And I had a wonderful education there and, yeah. and many friends along the way. Yeah. That's great. Then you graduated from college and became a what teacher? Well, I came back to um, Florida and and and, um, and I ended up teaching and um, uh, at middle schools. Uh, and I spent five years doing that, and um, then um, you know I, I wanted to expand my base and and, and learn more, and um, so I left from doing teaching after five years. I, I'm really asking these questions because a lot of the young people watching the show wonder how someone got to where you are today. Mm -hmm. And they li I like to show the building blocks when you move from this over to this and over to this and why you did that. Right, uh, after teaching and, and, uh, and I see a lot of my students today and uh, they remind me uh, the days that I, would, I taught school. Uh, they also remind me I've gotten older too. <laughs> so, but I, I uh, so have we all, <laughs> right? But it, it's, it's from teaching, and I had the opportunity to um, uh, move into the Department of Correction. Uh, the, the leadership of the Department of Correction um, uh, reached out to me because they would have been having it had a, a large number of African Americans that have been then incarcerated. Too many. Right, and and they they were trying to establish someone that could be a mentor and come in and, and discuss and to talk with them and uh, just share their concerns and and how we can repopulate them back into the community and become productive citizens. So that was a great experience for me as well, and and I got a chance to to see how prison system work. And, uh, Doesn't work at all, it, does it? It's not nice. <laughs> no, it is, it is wrong. All right. Uh, I've had a lot of friends, in all honesty, 
in the early days, I could have went either way. Mm -hmm. it, it, we, as it was, we moved and got into a different neighborhood and things changed. But I could have went that route just as easy as the other. Right. And I went back and spoke at the old high school that I spoke, that I went to in Detroit. And turned out there was the same day Jesse Jackson spoke. And mm. he introduced me, in fact, which oh, was okay. kind of cool. Yeah. But I watched these kids out there and I'm thinking, you know, how many of them are going to end up in jail? Correct. And it's just wrong. Correct. So did you feel you had an impact on that with your mentoring of the, the group? Uh, yes, uh, because I, uh, quite a few of them, once they got out of the system, um, they went on to do better things and, and, and they didn't return. And when I see them, I, I feel good about that. And, and, and they was always say that you played a role in, in my life and the decision that I made. Oh, uh, boy, that's got to feel good. You no, know, so I feel very good about it. And, and I see quite a few of them as I moved around town, and, uh, and they are no longer in prison. So when you left the prison system, then what did you do? Well, I... I Couldn't uh, hold the job, huh? Right. <laughs> 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 I, I had an opportunity, another opportunity came along where I... I um, uh, I was, it was dear to my heart, and that is uh, uh, young folks that were dying from sickle cell. Ouch. And uh, I didn't have much knowledge of it. I, I know it's prevalent in the African American community. But, Only, correct? Uh, it? No, it's, 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 it's uh, highly prevalent in the African American community, but it, don't, it, it affects a whole lot of other people. Does it really? Yes. Uh, you, you have the Asians, Hispanics, uh, uh, the Mediterraneans, uh, uh, the Greeks, all of those people are affected by sickle cell. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. And, I suspect a lot of people don't. Right. And with the population we have in the Florida, uh, we're finding more and more uh, uh, Spanish speaking uh, um, um, uh, population that are uh, being attracted by that. And, and they are, you find more and more of them having sickle cell, uh, what we call sickle cell beta thalassemia or sickle cell alpha thalassemia. And, and all of that is uh, uh, the symptoms of sickle cell disease. Is there any cure for it? There's no cure. Can, uh, they, can they make the symptoms go away? Or? No. Uh, it's a genetic disease, so you, you, you're born with it. And the problem with it is that uh, there's little, little research has been uh, um, provided for sickle cell. And, and the reason is um, because it's predominantly African American. Yeah. And then, and to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. No, I, you know, anybody with any brains could see that that might well be the case. Right. So it just only medication and, and um, that can try to release some of the pain and blood transfusion that they can take to um, uh, recycle the blood. But outside of that, there's very much little that can be done. Ouch. Yeah. Now, are you still involved with that? Yes, uh, I, I head up the state of Florida operation, and, and been been the uh, president and CEO for the state of Florida. So it's oh really? Right. Um, so I head that up. So that brings us to now you're a sitting council member in the city of Tampa. Correct. And you're making all that big money off of that, and you got another job you do. Yeah, that's why I have to have another job. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not coming from city hall. <laughs> you know, it's funny. And, and, you know, in all honesty, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people out there that look, would look at the council job and say 42000 That's a pretty good pay mm -hmm. check. All right. But given the number of hours that you have to put into it, it's not a part-time job like they call it. No, it's not. Uh, um, you give an example, we can have a meeting on 9 o'clock, start at 9 o'clock on a Thursday. Uh, we can break at 12 and we can come back uh, at 1, 1 and we can sit there up to 3 or 4. Then we also have evening meetings, and uh, evening meetings could go on to 11, 12, 1 o'clock. <laughs> it depends on what this agenda is like. So you're there almost all day. Uh, and, and, and it's, it's time-consuming. And then in between those meetings, uh, you're constantly meeting with staff. Uh, you're constantly meeting with your constituents and that will set up meetings at your office and want to meet with you. So And the grocery store and when you Correct. take the family <laughs> out for dinner. <laughs> Correct. Everybody, I, I swear, everybody believes that a politician's time is their time, mm -hmm. regardless. Oh, I just have one question to ask you. Just a few seconds right. of your time. <laughs> and while, you, while your meal gets cold. Right. And that one question ended up being 20, 25 minutes. <laughs> so it, it, that happens, happens all the time. And, and uh, you know, and I'm, I'm a people person. I, 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 don't, I have no problem, you know, chatting and communicating. 
but uh, sometimes you, you you would like to have your little privacy, your space. Uh, I, I think it's only fair to walk, uh, if you're going to ask a question, you say, is this a good time or should I make an appointment? Right. You know, it, a little bit of courtesy wouldn't <laughs> hurt at all. We ask a lot of the people that are in mm -hmm. elective office. We really do. Mm -hmm. We expect them to show up for christenings. and Correct. All, especially if you're running for office. <laughs> You've right. got to go through all these different things. The bar yeah. mitzvahs, christenings, whatever. Mm -hmm. You're expected to be there. You're absolutely right. And, and um, I just filed for re-election, so uh, uh, I'm, I'm starting to get the calls. <laughs> <laughs> so. you will, if you want our vote, you will show up. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Every event in your district, you, you start getting the calls, and, and, um, and they just don't know. That. It wear you out. <laughs> I know I'm, uh, I, I have the golf cart parade mm -hmm. in, in Sun City Center, mm -hmm. and I'm responsible for asking the political leaders to come and ride in it. Mm -hmm. And that's a Saturday morning. All right. Well, you could bring your family. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> yeah, some Saturday you like to sleep in a little. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about the city of Tampa and your position mm -hmm. on the council itself, uh, what you think you bring to the council with your background and experience. Mm -hmm. Maybe we we'll start there okay. and then talk about some of the specific things you're particularly interested in. All right. What well, does Frank Reddick bring to the council? Well, one, one of, I bring a, uh, a perspective that uh, been coming from a district, uh, coming from the, a district that is one of the most neglected district in the city of Tampa, uh, representing East Tampa and portion of West Tampa. Uh, I, in, I represent all of the predominant black neighborhoods. And one of the perspectives that I bring when I'm, I'm on council is that many of the other council members have not had any experience uh, working or living in the black community. Therefore, the needs that we have, they don't understand that. You, my needs are totally different from some of the other council needs. Uh, I example. imagine Harbor Island is a whole different thing. Co co correct. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we, we have been, it's been a failure on the administration part for years. Uh, previous mayors were uh, not much focus been placed in, in, into the, the inner cities, and uh, we need uh, street, better street lighting. We need sidewalk infrastructure needs and uh, infra infrastructure improvement. And, and you know, it, it looked upon that that could be an expensive cost. But I think my perspective is, uh, and I always say on the council, you don't have to give me the whole piece of the pie. I just want to share of it. Just make sure I get to the table. <laughs> <Right. laughs> yes, and and that's all I'm asking for. Uh, um, an example, you know, I, I gave earlier is is, is uh, uh, William Park pool. That pool been sitting vacant, in, you know, in my district for five years, and those kids who live in that neighborhood and surround that pool didn't have an opportunity. They were being bused to another pool and they had to sit out there for one hour before they can go get in the pool. Really? All right, so that was a problem for me, and, and, and I was determined to get that change. And, I, and I'm thankful that my colleagues agreed to it, because they didn't, they was unaware that the pool had been there had five years vacant, uh, nobody utilizing it, the repairs were not done. So that's that type of perspective, bringing in a perspective from the inner city communities uh, that other council members probably lack a little knowledge of. I was in Detroit when Detroit burned. Mm -hmm. I was downtown at mm -hmm. the Holiday Inn on Monroe Avenue when Detroit burned. All right. And I watched what happens when you neglect the inner city. All right. uh, people get frustrated. Correct. They don't have any pride in what's left because there isn't anything to be proud of. Mm -hmm. It's been deteriorated too long. Right. And it scares me because that was back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. and. I keep worrying that this same thing is going to happen all over America again if we're not really careful. Correct. And, and that's my point to the council and as well as to the, the mayor of administrations that you have to invest in these communities. Uh, all of the investment dollars cannot go uh, to the uh, what you call more urban areas and, and allow these other neighborhoods to flounder. And if you continue to allow that to happen, then you have to deprive these people of opportunity where they still pay taxes, but they, they don't feel like their lives are improving. 
and 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 they they drive through the city just like everybody else. They see what's going on in the other neighborhood. Right. Why can't we get some of these same services? And 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 and, and that's the, what you have to constantly remind uh, the council, and I have to constantly remind the administration. What do you think are some of the the driving forces in your particular constituency today? What are things there that are are making it better for them? The challenges that they particularly face. Right, and one of the things is that um, um, economic development is, is a lack of jobs. Uh, if you, you you pick up the paper, you hear on the news all of these businesses that are relocating the city, the city of Tampa, none of re, none are re, relocating to the inner city communities. Well, and part of that's because they've been allowed to run down. All right. I mean, let's face it. All right. They do a lot of work in other areas, but not there. All right. I mean, Riverwalk and all these things. All right. And we have, and, and, and we have a, for example, we have a Walmart that is planning on building uh, in the inner city community. And just to get the feedback for my constituents, uh, they're happy to see a store like that. Uh, because it creates jobs opportunity for them. Um, and, and they continue to see where the tax base can go up and, 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 and what we call a community redevelopment agency uh, that allowed them to do some improve, economic improvements. But, uh, I mean, they just want us any kind of business that we come in their community and, 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 uh, and, and be supported. Well, not only that, it, you know, it appears to me, if you go out into a lot of the poor areas, where the opportunities aren't, you're going to find the more expensive groceries, mm -hmm. the more expensive gasoline. Right. It amazes me. I drive down one street and the right. gasoline is this price. Right. <laughs> I go through a poorer neighborhood mm -hmm. and the gasoline's more expensive. Correct. And because they can't afford to go somewhere else to get it. Correct. And and they receive less service uh, than what you see in some of these other neighborhoods. So we're trying to change all of that uh, perspective. And, and I'm trying to uh, bring those attention uh, to the people in power to, to let them know uh, these communities got a bright future, but you got to invest in them. Uh, you know, we like to see our potholes get filled, we, <laughs> you know, and repave. And, and we don't, we don't want to just see you come and, and drop some lime on top of it, and, and, and the next time it rains, it's back open again. Exactly. <laughs> so we want, we want to see paved roads, and, and, and not just patches, and not patches, right? <laughs> and that's what we're getting now, you know, patches. Are Are you getting the response you'd like to get? Uh, um, the mayor has reached out and with a housing initiative that uh, in Suffolk Springs. Because uh, one of the other problems we have is have a whole lot of abandoned homes uh, in, 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 in the city communities. See, and that's bad. Right. And a house that's empty is a, it's just sitting there as a fire hazard. Right. So the mayor did put an initiative together to uh, uh, um, remove a, a lot of abandoned homes that were in Suffolk Spring. And, and now he's working with uh, developers and, and uh, the banks to uh, build these here. Uh, single family uh, uh, affordable homes uh, in that area. Uh, but if you move from that area and you move in other areas in the inner city community, you still see the same, same thing. So hopefully this is a start. Uh, and and um, so I'm just hoping that because uh, you, you move in Grant Park, for example, uh, uh, you can move to Highland Pine. All these are part of my district and black communities. But they're still drug problems. There's, there's still abandoned homes and, and, um, and, and still aborted up homes. So we're, we're trying to uh, make sure that uh, the administration attention is drawn to these areas as well. I like the idea of single homes. Correct. I really do. I have not seen very many housing projects that have worked really well right. to raise people up. Correct. You can warehouse them there, mm -hmm. but, but it's not good I know up in Ohio, they used to, they'd build these projects right in the middle of middle class projects. Mm -hmm. And the kids would have to go to school with the middle class kids. Right. But the middle class kids had bicycles, they had mm -hmm. phones, right. they had things. And these kids didn't. Right. And it was really almost unfair to put them into that competition. Mm -hmm. It is a competition. Right. 
uh, they're tearing down a lot of the public, public houses, in, uh, uh, particularly in my district. That's where most of them are located. And they are redeveloping that property, but the, what they're doing is uh, uh, they're doing the mixed use type of uh, housing, which the owner is setting aside like well, maybe 25% of those people uh, uh, be eligible to come back. And so that means you, you're displacing those people from the inner city. Where do community. they go? Right. A lot of them out here in North Tampa. <laughs> so, and that's and that's the problem. Uh, um, it is diluting my my district population, um, and I think this last unless they redraw the district, um, because I also have Channel Side in downtown. Unless they redraw the district, my district will not represent the person who's serving them on council, hmm. <laughs> because they will have displaced a lot of these people that lived in my district. I, I've always wondered, though, about having enclaves uh, mm -hmm. as far as redistricting, mm -hmm. it being Chinese and German and whatever. Uh, I'm wondering if that really is the, the best way to do mm -hmm. when we look at redistricting. I, I'm almost more likely to draw lines <laughs> Politicians, if they're the one drawing the, the district, <laughs> they're drawing the lines there. Well, you're going to be there. Guess who it's going to benefit. Correct. <laughs> you're absolutely right. <laughs> if Frank Reddick could take and write a check for something, what is the first project you'd write a check for? Uh, establish um, a community center uh, that would provide mentoring programs. Um, to provide tutorial programs uh, for the inner city kids. Wow, is that a that that's a project that ought to get underway today? Right, because it is desperately needed. Uh, a mentoring program, uh, after school program, they definitely need a tutorial program. And uh, if I can write that check, that's to build a community center, all-purpose community center, where it could be an education and 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 and. and the custodian of it would be an education. Maybe somebody <clears throat> out there watching this program right now has that kind of money that they could write that kind of a check. You know, I'd be much more impressed to see that than a new stage or auditorium being right. built for right. for the more affluent. Right, and, and, and that's more important. Uh, um, get these get kids an opportunity to, uh, um, to go after school and be mentor as well as uh, also go through the tutorial process and uh, they're, they're, they're bright students but they got to have the resources. Well, I, I'm a professional trainer. Mm -hmm. That's what I do all over the world. Mm -hmm. And I also understand there's a right brain, left brain syndrome that right. changes with the kind of people you have in the room and where they came from originally. Mm -hmm. And I, for whatever reason, maybe it's because of my Shawnee background or whatever, was a very right brain kid. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know why. Right. Don't tell me just to memorize something. Tell right. me why I need to know it. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't fit well in the educational system, mm -hmm. especially through the first 10, 10 years, nine years. <laughs> uh, my eighth grade teacher said, told my mother I was going to reform school and I probably <laughs> would be in jail before I finished high school. But the fact is, they mm -hmm. didn't know how to teach me. Right. And many of the kids that we're dealing with in the inner cities are right brain kids. Mm -hmm. They're extremely intelligent, Correct. but they learn differently Correct. than the standard European model mm -hmm. of thou will do exactly as you're told. Mm -hmm. And don't ask me why, just do it. Right. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they're very intelligent, bright kids, and, and, and uh, they just don't have the resources exactly. that, that you, you see with other kids. And nor nor people who can reach them because they mm -hmm. don't understand how to reach them. Right. And so that would be a dream for me. to, to uh, That would be a great opportunity for these kids. There's something I'd like to do with this program. Maybe you can help me. I would like to get Metropolitan Ministries on the program. Oh, I'd love to have the guy that founded it mm -hmm. to come in and talk about the original ideas, where he sees the organization. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been very impressed. Mm -hmm. I mean, like any monster organization, and they are yeah. anymore. They're huge. I might be to set that up for you. You uh, see I'll, a I'll, problem I'll, here uh, and there. 
but but nothing like you see on a lot of these charities. All right, I'm I'm, I'm um, good friends of the, the people at Metro Parks and Ministry. I, I just think it'd be right. wonderful to have them on because right. they're 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 kind of a first step to what you were just talking about. All right. They do mentoring. Correct. They bring people in to help. Correct. They teach respect and responsibility right. from everything I've seen. Maybe I've got it wrong. Yeah. But from what I understand, mm -hmm. what you're talking about, having a, a community hall, mm -hmm. they're kind of doing right. without having the community hall. Correct. And, and, and they're doing a wonderful job over there. I, I, I was there when they uh, dedicated uh, education building that they, they built on their property uh, uh, for, for, for the future. And, and, um, and I, uh, I'd be I'm more than happy to reach out to them because, um, like I say, I'm, I'm they're good friends of the administration over there. I would expect you knew a lot of them. That was right. kind of way. <laughs> Twist your arm a little on the yeah. air. <laughs> yes, uh, I do know. <laughs> but, but I think it would be interesting to have, I'd love to have the guy that founded it. Okay. Because I, I understand he's quite a quite an individual. He is. And talk about the various things that they started with and how they started mm -hmm. and uh, just general background. Uh, no hard questions, no. nothing. We don't do that here. I'm not here to make news or to mm -hmm. cause controversy, but I'd I'd love for people just to see what what there is and what we're doing because mm -hmm. honestly, and you know, we spend a lot of money, but I don't think we're doing it right. Right, you're absolutely right. <laughs> you know, you talked about the number of young people mm -hmm. going to jail. Mm -hmm. What is there? Our, four, our prison population is like forty percent black. Well, correct. I mean, that's wrong. And that's number not decreasing. That number is going up. Yeah, you know, you look back and you see uh, back as far as five hundred. Uh, A.D., mm -hmm. uh, there was a Greek philosopher that says the, Scott, the, the law is a spider web. The elephant passes through while the fly is captured. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these kids, there, there's no business for them to be in jail. No. And a lot of them are being, they're being arrested for minor infractions, and that's, that's what bothered me. And, and, um, it's it's not you know these young kids are uh, uh, half a gram of marijuana and right. they, and they get sentenced to um, these maximum terms and uh, and and that, you and it's I both know the same kid from uh, from another neighborhood. Right. They're going to slap his hands and turn them loose. Correct. And uh, and that's the problem here. Not right. Correct. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and a lot of them just you know they they and they they set off a life where where now they they career careers have been growing at a young age and 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 that's what we're trying to do and uh, um, educate these young kids about this um, uh, that education is the focus and not crime. I always like to give everybody on the show an opportunity for them to talk directly to their constituency and thank the ones that helped them get there and to also tell the others that you're still representing them too. All right. <laughs> so if you'd like to take just a second and talk to the constituency. Well, thank you. Uh, um, you know, for the past three and a half years serving on the city council, I have done my best and I believe to reach out to all of my constituents. I have worked diligently to bring the needs and concerns of the, uh, District 5 uh, to the community as well as to the administration. And now that I'm filing for re-election, I, I, I need to support you. You've been patient with me. You've worked with me closely. And we did accomplish a few things in the three and a half years. And I just hope that as I move forward in this next re-election, um, that you continue to, uh, to trust me and, and trust my leadership as a representative of District 5. Well. Keep working. The hardest thing that you can do is just keep pushing away. Funding is going to get better because right. I think housing rates are going up, so tax base should get better. Correct. So overall, things it should help hopefully out in the future will be a little easier than it has been in the past. I hope so. At least you're not faced with declining property <laughs> values. Right. So hopefully, hope we hope so. <laughs> Councilman Reddick, thank you for being on the program. Thank I you. appreciate you being here very much. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Spotlight on Government. Councilman Frank Reddick is here with us today. You're unique, you're special, and you're great. Tell yourself so often because you are, you know. We'll see you on the next Spotlight on Government. And again, Councilman Reddick, thanks for being with us. Thank you for this opportunity.